Our next guest, Congresswoman Grace Ming. She represents New York's sixth district in Queens. She was elected in 2013 when she began her service in the House. Now, as a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee and the Middle East and North Africa Subcommittee, she's emerged as a leader on a number of issues impacting Israel's security, missile defense funding, and Hezbollah. She was also the first Democrat to oppose the Iran nuclear deal. In 2017, she moved over to the House Appropriations Committee and the State Foreign Affairs Committee, where she defends aid to Israel and works hard to ensure that the other recipients of American aid threaten, excuse me, treat the Jewish state fairly. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the stage Congresswoman Grace Ming. Congresswoman, you've spoken on many occasions about the very difficult Middle Eastern policy issues that you dig into on a regular basis. When you look at the region, I want you to tell me what you think are the biggest threats and also what are the greatest opportunities. Sure. Well, being in Israel, I think that one of the biggest threats, at least in my few years here in Congress working on these issues, uh, is Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the reasons why I oppose the deal. Um, Iran is uh, Iran has in so many ways uh, endangered um, the community, whether it's here in America or whether uh, the lives of the people in Israel. And in working now that we have seen about nine years pass uh, of the Syrian civil war, uh, we have seen in so many ways, uh, how Iran has supported the leadership of Syria, Assad, and helped him retain power, and the threat that is faced by Israel and the region about Iran, supported by Russia, uh, in rebuilding uh, Syria. And so that is something that uh, is, is, lends to a very dangerous climate. However, I do think that there are so many good things that we need to address about the region as well. Israel is a nation that uh, is a very progressive nation. We think about so many accomplishments that affect and help us, whether it's here in America or inventions and achievements that help people, help humanity throughout the world. And I think that is something that we need to talk about more and more as well. Absolutely. I want to shift gears and kind of get personal with you, Congresswoman. When it comes to your approach to... Uh, oh, it's a rowdy uh, crowd today. They are. <laughs> what time is it? Uh, they are... Um, when you think about how you are guided around your foreign policy efforts and your belief and feeling towards Israel in general, how are they affected by your faith, uh, your family values, and just your kind of personal belief system? Sure. It, it is a very personal issue to me. Uh, I grew up uh, in a Lutheran church. Uh, my grandma was the first one to come to this country and helped raise us uh, in the Christian faith. Uh, I went to parochial schools growing up. Um, and being in Israel, the times that I went were, like you said, when my boys were very young. So the first time I ever went, they were ages two and four. And I remember visiting schools where there were metal detectors. I remember visiting very vivid memories of visiting a playground in Starot, a fortified playground, um, where there were shelters to protect the children if there were rockets from Gaza. And I remember very naively asking, how many minutes do children have to flee and to protect themselves when a rocket hits? And they said, it's not minutes, it's seconds. And hearing stories like that as a mom of two young boys uh, really affected me. And it guides me every single day as I sit on the Appropriations Committee, uh, working to secure bipartisan funding for programs, missile defense programs like Iron Dome that literally go towards protecting families and children like all of our own uh, in Israel is so crucial. It really is. 
You mentioned those shelters, and when I was fortunate to go to Israel in 2016, I was very naive as well as the word you used, and I saw this beautiful, I thought mural, right? Mm -hmm. Naive, right? Beautiful pink, yellow, blue, green. And I said, oh my gosh, that is such a lovely piece of art. And I was quickly told, that's not art, that's a shelter for our babies. Yeah. And uh, when you see it in person, like we, we all hear about it, right, in various spaces, whether that's in legislation, in media, uh, in business, but when you see it, uh, it does something different to you. And, and I can only say that I'm so appreciative that you are positioned uh, as you are to really make an impactful change so that those babies and those children have a different existence. Thank you. Everyone needs to visit Israel and see, like you're saying, firsthand to witness what families, especially our children, uh, have to endure every single day. Absolutely. Now, as we look at Lebanon today, how do you think the U.S. should approach Hezbollah uh, and just the growing dominance and aggressiveness of the, of the country? Well, the threat of Hezbollah in Lebanon and with the threat of Iran is something that terrifies us. It is something that we think about almost on a daily basis, and the threat that families uh, in Israel and their loved ones here in America uh, have to think about every single day. Um, and that's why I've worked so hard on making sure, for example, the foreign relations arm uh, of uh, Hezbollah is designated as a terrorist organization by not only the U.S., but also by the European Union. Absolutely. Um, and so while we are working proactively to um, defend uh, ourselves and democracy from this growing threat, we also need to make sure that we are providing and continue to provide adequate funding for programs that help build democracy uh, in the area as well. Now, I personally hope that you stay in office for a very long time in public service. However, <laughs> When you think about what the remainder of your legacy could look like, um, what comes to mind? My legacy, I want people, Jews and non-Jews, to hear these messages. Uh, as someone who uh, is not Jewish, I want to make sure that we are doing a good job at building bridges, at explaining why protecting Israel and bipartisan support for so many programs uh, in Israel is not only helpful just to the country of Israel, but to all of us as a nation, uh, to democracy as a whole. And I hope to continue to be able uh, to do that work, whether I'm in office or beyond, and to help others as well. I think that is such a critically important point. Um, as also a non-Jewish person, uh, I'm sure I'm asked, and, and I want to ask you now, what do you say in response to people that, that ask you, uh, you're not Jewish, so what, basically, why do you care? What do you say? Um, Pro-Israel issues are important to me because it keeps America safe, um, because these are issues as our strongest growing, uh, strongest democracy in that region. Uh, it literally helps keep our world safe. Uh, it is an investment that is worthwhile for our future generations. Uh, as a woman of faith, as a woman who tries to make sure that every child is able to grow up, like we mentioned, uh, in a safe environment and feel safe going to school, no one should feel the threat that so many children in Israel feel every single day of their lives. Um, and I believe that it is my role to help play uh, a role in that process. Excellent. Final question. Uh, we all saw and heard the devastating news uh, this morning of the rocket that came in from Gaza, landing right outside of Tel Aviv, mm -hmm. injuring a family of seven, including a young toddler and even an infant. When we see the hyperaggression that's happening in the region, and particularly in that space, what is your suggestion, policy-wise, for defeating that type of activity? Well, it's, it is crucial to have uh, conferences and conversations even beyond this conference, right? It's all good that we're talking about these important issues here today in Washington, D.C., but when we're going home, when we're talking uh, to people in our neighborhoods and back in our home states, we need to be carrying this message forward that we in Congress are working in a bipartisan way, both Republicans and Democrats, to secure funding to protect 
these very families uh, in Israel. When I was there, I got to see, for example, uh, the Iron Dome, uh, and I was able to see uh, what and where our funding goes towards, mm -hmm. uh, and it's important to help uh, Americans uh, understand that. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in thanking, thanking for her time and her commitment and her service and leadership, the Congresswoman from the 6th District in Queens, New York, Congressman Grace Ming. Thank you. Thank you so much.